Hey guys, Tor from TC here. I'm at GitCon with a bunch of great guitar players and YouTubers. And one who falls into both these categories is Martin Miller. Hello there. And I'm really happy you could come. Thanks uh, for having me. It's a pleasure. Yeah. So um, I was wondering if you could tell a little bit about yourself, mm -hmm. when you started playing, yeah. what inspired you, things like that. I started playing sometime in my childhood. Not very seriously. Like in, in every German household, there's like a classical guitar yeah. floating around somewhere, yeah. probably two. So I just grabbed it eventually. My my dad showed me how to fret a couple notes. And did that, he play? He does play like layman open yeah. chords. Yeah. But but yeah, but but he's a he's a big music lover. Uh, so he had all the, the the Pink Floyd, Miles Davis, all that that good stuff. The really good music had all those records, and I was listening to those. Yeah. So that that brought me into music big time. And someday uh, my cousin bought an electric guitar. And mm -hmm. an amplifier, and he brought it with with him on, on like Christmas or something. Yeah. And he even had a distortion pedal, and I was like, "Damn that's it, the shit. that's the shit!" <laughs> right there. I always liked guitar, but now I love it. Uh, it's like, especially like how it felt under the fingers when you were trying it. That compression yeah. is something that always. Yeah. I mean, I, I still to the day use very high gain tones when I play because that compression, the way it just feels yeah. to play with a high gain compressed tone is something very unique. So that's that's kind of where I got uh, where I got really into it. And then, mm. you know, the usual like my my parents were thinking if you if you're going to take this seriously and going to make it a job, at least study, at least yeah. have it like an academic grade. So yeah. I went to Dresden College of Music uh, for like 5 years, got a degree in guitar performance and music pedagogy. Funny thing is, since two years, I'm now teaching at the same institution. Oh, really? Yeah, well, I, came, cool. I came full circle. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, the the so and ever since I've been I've been doing a lot of session work, uh, some freelance work. That and since the last two years, it's been it's been a lot of work for Lainey and yeah. Ines in, yeah. in the clinic, in the clinic type world. I also got my own band. I made I made a solo record in 2013, and right now I'm I'm my my thing right now on YouTube. Since this is a YouTube convention, I might yeah. talk about YouTube side of things. I always drag my like my band into the studio and we yeah. just start recording tons of material. Yeah. That's really my thing right now because it's that perfect blend to me between playing, actually playing live music. So we do actually play live, we don't fake it. It's not one of those oh. live, yeah, live okay, things yeah, where yeah. it's one guy with one camera pointing at 10 different people yeah, after another. We're actually a 12 people crew and we, we really oh, wow. really cut that stuff. Yeah. yeah. So th that is the per for me the perfect blend between live playing and making a record. Yeah. Because I kind of when I sit down and mix all that stuff, I, I kind of take it as seriously as if if making a, an oh, yeah. album. So the goal is really to make some super high quality live recorded. Oh, that's cool. uh, Content and build a platform and see where it takes us. We'd love to tour at some point for sure. So that must take some time to you know to it's to crazy. Both no the video and the audio for that many people. One thing I, I'm always failing at. I, I'm not a very good YouTuber per se. Like I don't have a lot of documentary style content. I'm well aware of that because I'm a musician. Yeah, I'm just a yeah, guitar player. Yeah. I'm, I'm a guy who likes to make music and and put it out there. But really, I should document the the, the process that it takes to make those videos because I mean, we need about it's, we go into a studio and we still need about twelve. 12 hours solid to get everything rolling to the point where oh, we can wow. record and, yeah. and go for it. And even then, after we had one take, we usually record 25 minutes at a time, that kind of thing. We really oh. go for long, yeah. long stretches. Like we just recorded a Toto medley 25 minutes at a time. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, it's not out yet, but it's going to be out soon. Oh, cool. I'm working on it right now. So the amount of data we're dealing with, it, like we do a take and then we have to step back and wait for 30 minutes to transfer all the data yeah. so we can get rolling yeah. again. So. I don't think people have a remote idea. It looks easy in the end, but yeah. I don't think people have a remote idea what it takes. <laughs> but that's to, the goal. Make it look easy and then. Yeah, you know, exactly. But I'm actually scenes. thinking maybe I should do a Patreon, let people know how much work it is, yeah. how much money it is to yeah. make those videos. But yeah, that's a big passion of mine right now. God knows, by the time this video comes out, it might be a different thing. But <laughs> I'm actually planning to make this kind of a. In, turn this into a series and have a lot of guests come in like, hey, Virtual Donati is in town. We, oh, we yeah. have this, we, hey man, we have like 5 million views, why don't you come in and join us? Yeah. So that, that's yeah. kind of like the, the, the goal ult ultimate goal that, for that. That's yeah. true. Yeah. Did you have like some kind of pivotal moment where you went from like, oh, I like to play the guitar to like, you know, surely you must have spent, you know, yeah, you, yeah. Must, you, you put in the hours at some point. That's, that is very true. I think, uh, I think buying images and words in like '99. I actually started with my first Dream Theater record was Images and Words yeah. around the time that Scenes from Memory came out. But buying that record, actually, I saw I saw Pull Me, Pull Me Under on television. For some reason, in '99, somebody still played it. Yeah, cool. <laughs> uh, and I, 
at first I didn't really like the music, but I thought, man, that guitar player is the shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> actually, so that was one big pivotal moment, buying that record and, and soaking it up like yeah. crazy. And actually, the, 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 biggest, uh, the biggest epiphany I had when I saw uh, Steve Morse playing in like 97, uh, I saw the Purple yeah. in Plauen, Germany, a very small city. That's uh, right close to here, right? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. just around yeah. the corner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's actually where we do our videos. Oh, the, really? Those, those live oh. videos are, are made there, yeah. So, yeah, I was born two hours from here, so I'm a local. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, seeing him play, I, at the time, I was still I still thought Richie Blackmore was in Deep Purple. I didn't know much about their <laughs> history. And you know what? I thought I was pretty good. I, I, I knew Santana, I knew Eric Clifton, I knew all of these yeah. guys. I thought I was, pre I was pretty decent, and I saw Steve Morse play. It was like, what <laughs> the yeah. hell? It was like really, it was honestly a life-changing moment. Yeah. And it was never quite the same after. <laughs> it's like, seriously, like that concert experience where you go home yeah. and you, your mom is asking you, how, how was it? And you're just like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Yeah, that was, that was, that was life-changing. So Steve Morris, John Petrucci, uh, those were two very deciding factors. And then later on, I had the third epiphany with, with Pat Metheny, actually. Yeah. When I got, uh, I got a DVD called... Uh, Imaginary Day was kind of in 2000, 2001 yeah. maybe. And then I got the album Letter From Home. It was over. Yeah, and that was, that was another huge turning point for me when I actually understood, wait, wait, jazz can be really cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So mentioning Steve Morse and John Petrucci and knowing that, you know, John Petrucci is a big fan of Steve Morse. So there's yeah, kind of yeah, like yeah. a lineage the, going the up the through that. The tree of life. Yeah. yeah. And so I guess you gravitate towards the, you know, the, the more the alternate picking kind of... That's just how I learned to play. I mean, I, I learned to play in, in, in conservatory and mm. back then you were just taught to, yeah. to pick yeah. everything. It's just the way it was. And also to, to have the pick direction be decided by the rhythm. So yeah. when you have a set of, uh, of offbeats, yeah. you have a set of upstrokes. Yeah. So it was very strict at yeah. the time. And I kind of got away from it when I got, got into Pat Metheny more. Yeah. And I understood he has like this, this very horn like phrasing where he picks certain notes and he almost swallows certain other notes yeah. that gives it that offbeat accentuation yeah. and that's that then i got also got into into that kind of thing like you, you would call it swing picking maybe yeah, uh, yeah. That, that, so th those are the two things i feel kind of comfortable at the pure legato thing uh, that's for other people i, I love it but <laughs> that's, for not, tom that's, the, that's for the tom <laughs> quails of this earth yeah, yeah. But I mean, watching your pick technique, it's, I mean, I'm like, what, Jesus, that's, you must have spent some time kind of yeah, it was developing funny. that. Do, do you know Troy Grady? Yeah. The Cracking the Code yeah. guy? He, he came yeah. over to my house and he actually, he flew I over. I saw from, that video. So, oh, yeah. cool. <laughs> he came over from New York to, to my little, little place in Leipzig. Yeah. Uh, and we sat down and we talked about it and he had some very interesting insights. Like he was telling me, you're actually, it's, what I do is called cross picking, which means I change the angle of the pick with every pick stroke that I do. Yeah, so you, you it's always at the angle. It's like a pendulum yeah, over the yeah, string. Yeah, so it's not like yeah. the Paul Gilberts where they have one position and no. they alter it slightly to achieve yeah. certain things. My hand is always going. Yeah. Like actually, I go into different modes, but that's like the, yeah. when I was playing here, that that's like the default mode. Yeah, and it's and like if the string is here and you want to hit the string this way, your pick will be slanted this way. Yeah, it comes over yeah, like this yeah, and yeah. then leaves the string. Yeah. So every pick so stroke like a, leaves, yeah. leaves the string. I didn't know this. So he made me aware of that, oh. and, and that's actually cool. That's another couple of epiphanies I had, and also used the, the thumb to lift, lift it so over the never, So you never realized but you did But back in the things. day, it was pure intuition. It was putting on the Steve Morse record and trying to play too many notes or whatever. Yeah. So it's just shaped the technique like yeah. that. Yeah. It was what's, I think if you go the path of least resistance, you, get a, you tend to get a good result. Yeah. But the thing is, most people don't know what don't know how to listen to their bodies, to how their bodies respond to no. what they're playing. But when you really do, you realize, wait, this is not cutting it. But when I do it like this, yeah, this it works. Makes more, it's yeah. not, you, you don't even have to articulate it. You just, just have to let it yeah. happen. But letting it happen is a very, very hard thing, especially for adults. Yeah. So I started in my young years. So I yeah, developed you build it. Yeah. yeah, I think for adults, it's much harder. So nowadays I teach the cross picking thing. Yeah. After, luckily, Troy made me a better teacher by, oh. by, yeah, by, by showing me how, how I do it. Did you find, yeah. just out of curiosity, so sometimes if somebody makes you aware of something, yeah. suddenly you go like, you actually become too, too, too self conscious. Aware, yeah, that's like, that's you know. like red light fever. It's like the same when, when I noodle around while you dial in the yeah. settings. It's like, oh, this is going on tape. This yeah. is going to be, yeah. be on the internet yeah. forever. Yeah, that does happen. I mean, it's a, we don't tend to talk about it that much. Maybe that should be a thing with, with, that we expose more as a, as a musician. 
especially in that field that we're in, where it's like musicians, musicians, yeah. you always have to to be on, on the top of your yeah. game. It, it, it's quite, it's quite, uh, it's quite challenging mentally at times. People so, yeah. expect a certain thing. Yes, exactly, yeah. exactly. And and you might know the whole internet thing where we put out content that is perfect and polished. Mm. It kind of supports that. Yeah. It's 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 not easy. It's yeah, I definitely get get self conscious at times. It's something I struggle with a lot. Yeah. Well. It's been a pleasure having you yeah. here and a lot of fun. And I hope we get to hear you jam tonight or maybe tomorrow. We'll night. see. Yeah, we'll see. Fingers cool. crossed. <laughs> Thanks so much. Thanks so much for having me, man. <laughs>